today we're going to be talking about uh, 10 ways to guarantee unhappiness. Now this scripture goes the exact opposite of that. And uh, so if you follow everything in this scripture, you'll be have a happy and fulfilled life in Christ. But uh, we find here at the in this scripture, there's about eight things there that uh, guarantee us happiness if we would just follow that. And eventually I'm going to get, tell you ten things real quickly that will make you unhappy. So it says here in the scripture in James 4, for happiness, it says to be pure. It says to be peace-loving. It says to be considerate of others. Also submissive. Full of mercy, the bearer of good fruit, be impartial, and be sincere. Pretty good philosophy to be happy in life if you have all those particular qualities. And I think those are quite powerful. And if we think of uh, terms of enriching the family, we should uh, be on the peril of negative things in our life that can destroy all those things. And so the opposite of all those things that I've just mentioned will make you the most miserable and bitter person and that nobody would want to be around. I like this little phrase by Ben Franklin. Benjamin Franklin said, a little neglect may breed great mischief. For one of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the one of the shoe, the horse was lost. For the one of the horse, the rider was lost, being overtaken and slain by an enemy. All for what a, a little care about a little horseshoe nail. So you can see from that little story that one negative thing leads to another negative thing. And another negative thing can lead to very sad results. All for the want of a little horseshoe nail. Well, let's talk about um, 10 things that will just make your life miserable, okay? So you want to stay away from these things. Neglecting the Bible hurts the family. Now, we're starting a new... Um, series in reading the Bible in your bulletin, starting with Genesis, and so, um, so it's very important that you read the Bible in 2022, so there's a little plan, you have to read about four chapters a day, it'll probably take you 20 minutes to read those um, four chapters, so that's not too much time out of your day, you might want to read two chapters in the morning, two chapters in the evening, However you see it fit, it's important that we're in God's Word. Every family member should have a Bible. And every once in a while, I get a request from some of the kids in kids' club saying that they don't have a Bible. So we are more than happy to give the kids a Bible. And uh, everyone should have a Bible. And more important, one should have a Bible that should be read. And teaching should be obeyed by the parents, and that they set a good example for their children. The Bible still is the number one seller in books, and hopefully it's the number one book that is read as well. I love the scripture that helps us to draw near to God. You know, we listen to our news, and some of the news we want to believe, and some news, that, as we know, is false news. But the good news of the Bible is a true 100% of the time. You can count on God's Word. I like Tim LaHaye, who's a very popular author. He said there are seven things that will just come about in your life if you are a steady Bible reader and a believer of the Bible. He says, it will help you to have victory over sin. It will help you to overcome worry. It will give you comfort or confidence in your faith. It will help you transform your life. 
It will help find God's will for your life. It will give you biblical knowledge. It uh, outfits you for unlimited service to God and to others. And it will, I can add one more, it will help you to become nearer to God. And uh, God's wisdom is unbelievable. And if we follow His wisdom, we will not have unhappy life, but we will have a fulfilled life. I have come that you might have life more abundantly. That's a really neat scripture. And if you want the abundant life, be found in God's Word. Can we afford not to read God's Word in 2022? Number two, neglecting prayer hurts the family. Each day the family should be led in prayer together as uh, well as individual prayers that we have. Meal time seems to be an excellent time to uh, gather around the table and pray together. Unfortunately, I asked the question when I was in Minerva, Ohio, I had a class at the high school, and I asked them, how many times do you get together for a family to have a meal together? The answer was maybe two or three times a week. And the reason for that, everybody's involved in sports, everybody has their schedule. My father works a lot of hours and is usually not home. Or breakfast, everybody's gone, and uh, so it's hard to get the family together even to pray for the meal, because we're not together for a meal anymore. We're so busy. You know, what happened ever happened to leave it to beaver? You know, a lot of those family uh, shows were around the table, and they, you know, they had a lot of great fellowship around the table. And I think the Waltons, they uh, always prayed before they, uh, you know, what a great example that show was as far as godly living and family living. Yes, prayer should be including adoration of God. Your prayer should be confession of sins. Also should be thanksgiving to God for all that he has given to us. It should also mean praying for others. I know um, that um, it's important we have the perfect example for a prayer. Now, Marley Bonser sometimes get upset that we do not record or repeat the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to do that this morning, okay? Let's do that together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and forever. Now, we always used to do this in the Presbyterian Church every week, so we need to do that more. That is the perfect example. And everything that um, I listed as important in prayer is in the Lord's Prayer. I guess uh, if anybody knew how to pray, it was our Lord Jesus Christ, that's for sure. Number three for just having an unhappy life is neglecting worship really hurts the family. It seems that uh, we've gotten away from that. As I've said many times before, I believe only 17% of the American families are found faithful in worship. It used to be up in the 40%. Uh, back in World War II. But it seems like that Sunday's another day, just like another work day. I really praise uh, businesses like Chick-fil-A, Hobby Lobby, and Fairway. That uh, what's, what's another one that always that is, uh, just closes on Sunday? The main uh, I know Walmart hasn't shut down yet, that's for sure. I think they did shut down for Christmas. You've got to give them some credit there. And uh, so we need to reserve Sunday as a day that we worship the Lord. I find it so sad that many of the sports clubs have the decision, the kids make a decision, and I guess the parents help them make that decision, that they have uh, sports on Sunday morning. And uh, it's really sad. They, 
They have to leave. They have a traveling team, and they leave at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, that's not right, is it? I mean, we have to have Sunday is the day that we worship together as a family. No other investment of a similar amount of time will produce such dividends for the family or strength, strength and guidance by worshiping together on Sunday morning. Parents and grandparents should set the example declaring their reverence for God and their love for the church. Children should not be sent to church, they should be led to church. I've often said, and I say it again, that the greatest American scene is the whole family together worshiping. And uh, we are so thankful that, that uh, you have been brought up that way. Um, I know that I never had the courage to say to my dad, Dad, I'm not going to church today. Or my son and daughters never came up to me and said, Dad, we're not going to church today. Well, it looks kind of bad for ministers' kids aren't in church anyway. What an example the minister is. So they, they really were kind of afraid to come up to me and say, I'm not going to church today. Number four, neglecting to build Christian friends hurts the family. Proverbs tells us that he would have friends must show himself friendly. Each Christian family should put forth an effort to build Christian friendships. Now, uh, this should be done for mutual helpfulness in times of stress and in need. Other families need the blessing that comes to them through you. Now, I've had people say, well, I can sit at home and listen to a TV program of a preacher, and I, you know, that's, I, I, somebody came up to me and said that, I'm not going to say his name, but I said, well, what about you coming and uh, having us enjoy you when, by coming to church? We miss that of you. And uh, he really didn't know what to say on that, because he was satisfied just listening to a TV evangelist on Sunday morning. But uh, the Christian says, a friend in need is a friend indeed. The world's philosophy of a friend, a friend in need is a pest. Okay, that's, I, I like the Christian view, you know, that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Number five, neglecting one's neighbor is to harm the family. Now, in many parts of the world, a neighbor is considered a person that lives right next to you. But Jesus defined a neighbor as anyone that is in need. And you have the opportunity to help them. That is your neighbor. The perfect example of that in Scripture is the prodigal son. And uh, even a Samaritan, you know, uh, you know uh, that, was a, that was a big difference. Then Samaritans didn't get along with anybody. They were like half -breed. And here, the Samaritan, uh, you know, was the one that uh, helped the good Samaritan. And uh, so that's our goal. But what a perfect example of, uh, you know, sometimes you feel guilty. Uh, remember the hitchhiking days? We used to pick up people on our, our vacation to be able to help somebody out. Now you're kind of afraid to do that with uh, all the stories about picking up somebody. Now you hardly even see any hitchhikers along the way. But times have changed. But the church is the great organization that the main focus is on Christ. Now you can belong to the Elks Club, the Lions Club, the YMC, 4-H Club. And I have a lot of good memories about the 4-H Club. Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, sports clubs, even dance clubs. But as I said, the church is the organization that's called the Bride of Christ. And we should feel guilty if we neglect the Bride of Christ. That's how much the Lord thinks about the church. You mentioned all the scriptures about the church. There are a lot of them. And uh, Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as some are in the habit of doing. That's every preacher's favorite scripture. 
Hebrews 10, 25. Number six, neglecting the opportunity to make the right decision hurts the family. Jesus warned about the person who hears the word but lets the cares of this world and uh, get a hold of them and also preoccupies himself with the riches of this world and uh, chokes out the word. I mean, uh, that's, I like the parable of the different soils. And we have to be careful that we're not choked out by the cares and the, the temptations of this world. And they are many, aren't they? It is, you think of, TV is so frustrating. You sit down and watch a program, and there are five commercials in between, or more. I think one time we timed, there was eight minutes between <laughs> the show and the commercials took eight minutes. Very frustrating. And so we're tempted a lot by all the advertisements that, that we have. You've got to have this to survive in life. But the only thing you really need is Jesus. And Jesus will help you through all times of life. No time for church and community and God has a negative impact on family values. Remember the song back in the 70s, I believe, by Madonna? That she, I am a material girl, okay? And live in a material world. Do you remember that song at all? Uh, well, uh, well, she was kind of, still kind of materialistic. I guess we call this kind of girl a high maintenance girl. I imagine she would be. I think she's very rich as well. But how sad! Many girls marry unchristian guys who wants nothing to do with God, who acquires nothing for their self-image, and who does nothing for others, and it's all about self. Now. We don't have any too many young girls here, but uh, you don't want that kind of guy that is all about self, about me, and don't care about God. No. Uh, some people go to the bars to find a mate. Now, I went to a Bible college. I thought that was a good, good thing to do since I was becoming a minister. And so I found Chris at a Bible college. So that's a, that's a good place uh, for the uh, young people to find a mate. And... Uh, but there are some at Bible college that probably wouldn't have been a good idea for me to do. There's, there's no perfection even at Bible college anyway. But how sad that many couples desire the things of this world rather than Jesus. The Bible warns us frantically about being unequally yoked. So girls and guys uh, and grandparents try to bring, uh, have our... Uh, our kids, our grandchildren, married Christians, anything that we can do to encourage that. Um, we're worried about Liberty, you know, she's going to Grandview College, and she came home and she made a quilt for, uh, she found a new boyfriend, he's on the football team, and so we're worried about, uh, you know, we might be seeing Liberty bring this boy home, and we just hope that uh, he is of God. <coughs> Not just of football, but of God, okay? Number seven, neglecting to become a giver or a tither hinders, hinders the family values. Malachi, boy, that's a strong scripture. The last book in the Old Testament, this is what is said. I will return to you, says the Lord, oh, excuse me, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Most believers who are exposed to the teachings of the Word of God realize that you're supposed to give some of those earnings that you receive back to the Lord. I love the bumper sticker that says, Don't honk if you love Jesus, tithe if you love Jesus. Our church needs uh, $1,300 a week to meet their weekly bill. I think that's pretty close to it. Thanks to you, we have met our obligations during these tough years of COVID-19. In fact, uh, you guys are so dedicated, we didn't even have to even pass the uh, offering plate. And uh, we are so thankful that for people like you that keep this church going. Liscom needs a church, it really does. And I wish we could get more and more people to realize, to raise their families 
without church, as we've already said, is, is a real detrimental. Aren't you glad that you brought your children up in the ways of the Lord and you're having great dividends spiritually because you have allowed the Lord to be first in your family. It's such a blessing that so many people are missing. And uh, can't you see why the Lord says the church is the bride of Christ? For us not to give cause of spiritual empowerment impoverishment to our economic well-being. I always like this thing about giving. Remember, you cannot give God. He has the bigger shelf. I think that pretty well says it. And you have received many, many blessings because you have given unto the Lord. He's watching out for you. He'll make sure that everything is going to be okay. But the problem is, so many people have gotten involved in so many things of this world, and maybe overdoing their credit card, and uh, are tremendously in debt because of bad decisions, and so sometimes God gets way in the background. But if you put God first, then you will be very well blessed. Number eight, neglecting to praise and thank God hurts the family. A significant economic event took place in the life of a poor family. The father was able to secure a loan to buy his family farm. And the wife said at mealtime, she told him, I think we ought to thank God at mealtime for allowing us to get that loan so that we could purchase our place that we're living in right now. And so the father, who hadn't been a great prayer, kind of um, muddled through a prayer, thanking God for the farm that they were given through a loan and also for the food and other things. And um, because of that prayer, the family started praying every mealtime. And it was a blessing to that family, enriching their lives and their children as they started having prayer at every meal that they were around. Number nine, one, two more to go. Neglecting the Lord's day hurts the family. Now, this kind of um, goes along with what I've already said, but I think it's so important. The, it started from the very beginning in the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And I realize that uh, we don't have a Sabbath, we have the Lord's Day now, but the principle is still there about meeting together to worship the Lord our God. The tithe is one-tenth of our income, but by coming to church, you are dedicating one-seventh of your life, or at least uh, that day, to just worshiping the Lord your God and thanking Him for all the blessings that He has given us. I always say that the farmer should be the most faithful because he realizes that he can't do anything without uh, him, the Lord sending rain. I think it was a real miracle this year for the farmer. We got so little rain and such great crops for that little rain, and then the prices were up a little. And God has blessed the farmer uh, this year, as well as blessed all of you. We made it through a year of COVID, and uh, so we're still here. I know that we've lost some, and we feel so bad about that. But indeed, we have a lot to, to be so thankful for just every day that we get up, and just opening your eyes in the morning and being able to see. What a blessing that is. Every morning that you get up, and able to walk to um, wherever you want to go. All of your five senses. That is so much to be thankful for. The Lord's Day should be a special day for God and family. Unfortunately, sports, TV, friends should not hinder the Lord's Day. My wife has a church cookbook, and uh, it's called Feeding the Flock. Now, what a, what a nice name for a, a church cookbook. 
feeding the flock. And uh, it was compiled in Worthington, Minnesota, and it took recipes from the year 1900 to the year 2000. And uh, so it's quite a chick, uh, cookbook, and uh, it has some chickens on the front of it, feeding the flock. And uh, so it's, uh, that's exactly what needs to happen on Sunday, that we come and hopefully you are fed the Word of God through preaching. And, and Todd's doing a great job on our, our Sunday school, and uh, we encourage you to even come Sunday night to, to be fed again, not only through meal, but also through the Word of God. Yes, Sunday should be dedicated to our Lord. And number 10, neglecting to respond to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit impoverishes our family life. When you were baptized, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings presence and power in your life in each believer. All Christian families need to make a proper response to the Holy Spirit so that the family life may live in grace and guidance from God. And um, the question is best, when do you feel closest to God? Well, sometimes we feel closest to God when we know we've done wrong and the Holy Spirit just comes upon us and said, hey, you're wrong, you're wrong. And uh, that's why... The Holy Spirit does this because He loves you so very much. He wants to safeguard you against all the evils of this world. And I think we can all relate to the times when we're in sin. We're miserable. And I guess we should start worrying when we can sin and feel good about it. And uh, the world just candy coats sin so much that you almost are tempted to feel, yes, I, I kind of enjoy this. And... Uh, but as we know, in the definition of sin, it's, it's only pleasurable for a season, isn't it? And then we pay, we pay, and we pay. And the Holy Spirit loves us so much that He, he guards it. The definition of the Holy Spirit is one who right alongside us. And that's what He does. He right alongside us because He loves us so very, very much. In conclusion, this... Uh, Message and then on kind of a negative note, I tried to say, you know, don't do this or else you'll be unhappy. But uh, hopefully, the negative message will produce a positive result. It has been said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. May the Lord our God bless our families in these troublesome times. If any time we needed the Lord, it's during these times. And, COVID-19 has really hurt every church. And I go to the ministerial meetings, I told you, and uh, every every pastor is kind of discouraged right now during this COVID. But we're thankful that you have stuck with us and um, have um, just been faithful to God during these tough times. Now, we, it, we weren't uh, very long in having communion when the COVID started. We started with a communion meditation we had a 15-minute service to start off the COVID time, and I, I was uh, I was kind of worried that this might catch on the 15-minute service anyway. But uh, you are here, and you are blessed, and uh, we just pray that uh, eventually we'll get over this and we can get back to normalcy in our church and all churches. I know that Union uh, right now didn't have church today because of the COVID. And we're all sick of it, aren't we? we will, I'm tired of wearing a mask, too. That's uh, where I hope we won't have to go back to that. Our world needs prayer. We need prayer. And we need God's strength. The Holy Spirit will come in and just make us stronger in the year 2022. And keep up with that Bible reading. That's so important. Let's pray.